Welcome to Applique of the Month Club. This month we're going to make a llama. Trace your design placement onto your background fabric. Only trace the outline of the llama. There's no need to trace in the inner detail lines. Trace your applique shapes onto fusible web. Bind them onto your chosen fabrics and neatly cut them out on the line. Peel away the paper backing from the W1 piece and position that on top of the design placement to trace in the inner detail lines. We ironed that onto our background fabric first and we did a straight stitch around the edge just to hold it in place. We also traced in the inner detail of the C1 piece. We then ironed that on so that we could then easily iron on the brown nose and mouth. Continue placing all of your pieces on. If they're a little bit big, just trim them back here and there. That can happen when you're tracing. And then you can iron on your flowers down the bottom. The flowers up the top, we just had those positions there, but we did take them away to do the stitching. So they will go on last. And then iron on your butterflies. So now that your pieces are fused onto your background fabric, it's time to stitch. Now you can stitch around the edge of your shapes any way that you like. You might want to do a zigzag stitch, you might want to do straight stitch, even a blanket stitch. We're going to sketch the applique out because we love sketchy applique. But today, in this video, we're going to show you a really great technique for getting a sketchy applique look without having to use your free motion foot. I like sketchy applique because it's quick and easy and it takes your applique to the next level by adding a lot of texture and movement to your work. Here's a new piece that we're working on and we've started with the sketchy applique and you can see the life and the movement that it's given the design. However, it does take practice and some people don't like free motion sewing and that's why we're going to show you this great technique where you can get a similar effect. Let's talk about tearaway stabilizer. For blanket stitching and zigzag stitching, tearaway is optional. If your fabric has enough body and it's not puckering, then you don't need it. But if your fabric is puckering, then you do need it. For sketchy applique, you definitely need to stabilize your fabric. This week, we're going to experiment with some wash away tearaway. Removing tearaway from behind sketchy applique can be quite a chore. So that's why we're going to experiment with the wash away tearaway. And for anyone that's making a quilt, this is going to be especially helpful for you. We're using a product called Solubilize by Violene. It washes out in cold or warm water. So once you've finished stitching, all you have to do is wash your piece to remove it. The best place to get advice on wash away stabilizers is from a shop that does machine embroidery. So that's what they specialize in and they'll be very happy to help you out with what you need. Now time for stitching. We're going to use a technique that Alora made up. It's going to look like sketchy applique, but it's a little bit more precise and a bit easier to do. We're going to achieve this effect with just your open toe foot, a triple straight stitch and then a straight stitch. This technique is good for anyone that wants a free motion effect but they don't like free motion sewing. I'm going to use a signature thread. It's a variegated cotton thread. I'm using a size 75 machine embroidery needle. As mentioned before, I have my open toe foot on and I'm going to select a triple straight stitch. Here's my sample. I've got a little shape applied onto my background fabric and I'm using two layers of the wash away stabilizer because it is quite fine and I just needed to give that a little bit more body. Now the next thing I've done here is I've got my stitch on which is the triple straight stitch and I've brought it down to quite a small stitch length of 1.5 and I've actually moved my needle position over so that the inside edge of my open toe foot is going to sit on the edge of the shape and the distance from the edge of the shape to the needle is going to be, you know, a little bit less than an eighth of an inch, I say about two millimeters. So when I'm stitching, this stitch goes backwards and forwards. We've um, touched on that before. And when I'm stitching, all I have to do is line up the edge of the inside edge of my foot with the edge of my shape. Now, when you're using a triple straight stitch, as I mentioned before, it moves in a forwards, backwards, forwards motion. So whenever you need to pivot, you always pivot when your foot is, when the stitch is actually in a forwards motion. 
Now if you can see a little bit of the bobbin thread coming up to the top, just reduce your top tension. I'm gonna go down to three. Once you get used to the stitch, you can start going a little bit faster. So we're just stitching that little fraction away from the edge. Using a variegated thread, you can um, see a change color as we go. Sometimes I even get a little bit too close to the edge, but it doesn't really matter. Sometimes when you're working a little bit faster, you can just maneuver the fabric as you go. I'm just gonna turn and stitch over the little bit that I've done there. And then you can pull your threads to the back if you want to. It's a very secure stitch. What I'm going to do now is I've changed to a straight stitch and I'm just going to stitch over, in and out, across. Just to add a little bit of interest to it. And then where I get to this bit here, I'm actually gonna continue up a little bit. I'm gonna turn around, I'm gonna come down a little bit too. And I'm just gonna wobble in and out over the stitch. And you can basically just keep going around as many times as you like. I might do a little bit more there. So you can see it's giving us that um, sketchy kind of look there. And you can imagine like if you had say a leaf shape or something, like you could just have a lot of fun with sketching in any kind of like little extra lines. I might put a little bit more shagginess here, like this is um, our llama's fur. We can do like this. So we're just stitching as many, you know, as many times as you like. That's our fake sketchy applique there. And over here we've got our real sketchy applique that I just did a few minutes ago. So you can imagine that you could create a really arty, sketchy effect using the fake sketchy applique on your llama. Now for the fun part, let's remove the tear away. So cut away what you don't think is necessary. Just roughly cutting around the edge. Okay, and I've just got a bowl here of cold water and I'm just going to pop these in and we're going to see what happens. So it takes a little while to begin with, but I think once that really absorbs, it actually starts turning into like a little bit of a gel. Oh wow, look at that, that's all coming away really nicely. Now, if you wanted to make a quilt using sketchy applique, you would put, um, use your wash away, tear away. You can do your sketchy applique over everything. And then the next step from there would be, once it's dry, then you would put it together with your batting and backing and you can just like outline all of the shapes. But look, that's washed away nicely. I'm just gonna dry up the pieces and then we'll have a look and see how that turns out. And this is how my pieces turned out. If you did want to make all of your blocks into a quilt, you would just remove all of the stabilizer and then you would put it together with your three layers for quilting. So your batting, your backing and your quilt top. And then you would just outline quilt around the edge of the shapes and then do some echo quilting. You would need to then add a little bit of extra quilting around the outside edge. Just like we did in the Twilight Dreaming quilt. We did all of our applique first and then we put our layers together and then we did the quilting. Now we're not making a quilt, so with our llama, what I'm going to use is a thin iron-on pellon. It's very dense, it's very flat, and I'm going to iron that on to stabilize my work. And this is going to give me a slightly quilted effect for when I do my sketchy applique. So I'm gonna to head to the sewing machine and we're gonna set up a tripod so that you can watch how I work when I do my sketchy applique. I'm going to start stitching with the top flowers taken off because they overlap and they're going to get in the way, so they can get done last. And I'm going to start down at the bottom of the llama's neck. 
So let's go. So what I do is any section that I feel is going to be like too big for me to get around in one go, I'm going to do that three step motion like I showed um, in last month's video. So I'm just going to stitch away and you can um, have fun watching. Now, when I feel that I can't jump from one shape to another shape neatly, I'll actually finish off and then start again. But where I start, I like to make sure that I am going to be able to easily blend on to another shape.
here's our llama all finished. We hope you enjoyed this video and we'll see you next month.